when did you discover your talent and dedicated, decided to become a Santera? Well, as a little girl, I was always kind of getting into mischief with artistic things. Uh, I remember my mother uh, uh, sewed all my clothing, and uh, I probably was about four or five years old when I started looking at shapes. She was sewing at the sewing machine, and I had this kind of like, uh, back then in the 50s, uh, late 50s, early 60s, the little girls wore these little kind of petticoat uh, dresses. And I was sitting uh, by her chair, and I happened to find a little pair of scissors, and I proceeded to pick up my dress and cut little holes in it. And I just remember looking at the circles, and I thought those were really cool. By the time my mother looked down at me, I, I had holes all in the dress she had made me, uh, which was kind of amusing. She didn't, she didn't get mad, but I think I had uh, an attraction to shapes and colors and, at a very young age. That's kind of how I started uh, at doing art here and there growing up. And as far as uh, the Santero art, I started in around 1990, uh, right around the time I think my father passed away. Um, and I had run into an old college girlfriend who was an art teacher at Skinner Elementary. And uh, her and I got together and she said, you know, Therese, she says, why don't you try doing some santos? And she had lived in Taos. So that's kind of how I got interested. In, a few Santeros from New Mexico put, took me under their wing and, and taught me some of the old ways of making the, the work. Why is it important for you to share this tradition? It is important uh, to keep the art alive. Um, back um, in the early 1800s, 1700s, when this art was done in northern New Mexico and southern Colorado, Families were isolated and cut off from civilization. So they started making their own santos for their churches, moradas, and homes. They used the material that they had access to, pine wood, natural pigments. They made their homemade varnish for the pieces. Uh, and they produced uh, much of the work. Well, when um, Santa Fe uh, and northern New Mexico and southern Colorado, more people started coming in. Uh, one of the bishops, Bishop Lamy, who came into Santa Fe, he, he didn't like this type of artwork that, that was being done. And, and he literally destroyed a lot of the artwork. Well, luckily, there were some folks um, that saw the importance of the art artwork in the uh, 20s and 30s, and they started making collections of it. So we still have some of the old pieces today, and some of the old work, a lot of it was lost, but some of the old work can still be viewed at the uh, Santuario, which is in Chimayo, Color, uh, New Mexico, right outside of Santa Fe, where you can still see work uh, created in the 1700s by Jose Rafael Aragon. Does your work tell a story? Um, like when you, like does it have a meaning? Like is there a story behind it? Or? Oh yeah, most of my work has stories behind it. Um, the story of the saint, uh, the symbols that represent that saint. Uh, this work was created many years ago, uh, again, to uh, be a barrier breaker. Uh, when the Spanish tried to uh, conform indigenous fam uh, individuals to Catholicism, they used these pictures to teach about the religion. Uh, so uh, it does tell a story, and that, uh, that is what uh, retablos were used for. The word retablo actually means behind the altar. So it's were the saints behind the altar, and they were definitely used as uh, teaching mechanisms. <laughs>
think Santeros has have social responsibility? I think they do. I, I really like that question, by the way. <laughs> um, I, I, do, I do believe that uh, Santeras and Santeros should have social responsibility uh, to uh, further the word of, of God, of the teaching of the saints, of uh, giving back to the community when they can. Um, of uh, trying to uh, live, live a good life, and be an example. Yeah, I do, and that's a great question. Um, do you think like some santeros don't do that, or what do you think of the santeros that don't I consider think, themselves? You know, I know a lot of the santeros and santeras, and I think the majority do do that. There may be a few here and there that uh, don't actually walk the walk. They may talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk. And, and you know what? I really believe that it's not up to us to even, even attempt to judge anybody. But um, I think that for the most part, the, the people that I know that do this type of work really do uh, believe it. I mean, it comes out in your work if you don't. So um, that's my belief. Which present or past Santero do you um, admire? Oh boy, there are so many good ones and they are uh, unique in their own right, each and every one of them. Um, I would have to say there is a woman in Santa Fe, uh, her name's Lori Garcia. She is very good, Santera. Um, also, uh, Maria Cash Romero is uh, one that's been in market for a long time. And I really love her work because she's pretty traditional, but she takes a lot of twists on different things. And she's very, very creative. Uh, and she has fun with her work. She has humor involved with it, which I think she is. She's a very, very good artist. Would you say you get that um, twist from her with your art? Boy, I don't think I could even compare myself <laughs> to her. She is just, uh, just very, very unique and, and still going at it. And I think I'm not really quite sure how old she is, but I know she's probably been in Spanish market in Santa Fe for, I would say, close to 30 years. Yeah. So, yeah, and I, I she's like my uh, uh, aspiration to, she just keeps, and I think that if you've got something to get up and work toward every day, uh, it just keeps you much more healthier and active. So what makes your work unique from other um, Santero artwork? Well, uh, I think that what makes my work unique is I use all natural pigments. Um, my faces, I think I've developed a pigment for my saints' faces that is unique, and my eyes are unique. Uh, my style, I believe, can be identified uh, fairly easily. And I use a lot of sgraffito in my work. I, I like the sgraffito of scratching back into the piece. Um, and I try to use it as for textures and garments and uh, just decoration alongside. Uh, I, I like that uh, effect. Would you say the bonnet is also like unique? Or the ros rosette? Sometimes I make a real traditional uh, rosetta. Um, but um, sometimes I make them kind of wild. As you probably saw in my piece of The Last Supper, those rosettas are, are kind of wild. Yeah. I really like the, how you make the rosettas. Oh. I really, really like that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. it, it, uh, yeah, it's a little different. Yes. Thank you. I'll Thank make you. some more. <laughs>